Glad I'm safe tonight. Amen. I'm so thankful that we come to the church and we can enjoy ourselves. You know, with that glory. And uh, I've been blessed already. You know, we can go home right now, so we've been to church tonight. Amen. 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 I'm just so thankful that people can come and express their, their want and desire to be at the Lord's house, That's their right. interest, yeah. their love. To be inside God's house. You know, there's a lot of people won't do that today. There's a lot of people want to sit back on the pews and just play all snugged up or whatever, afraid to break a smile. And if they had a smile, they'd break their face, I guess. And uh, but I, I, I believe that you know, if you're really, truly born again, that you won't have that desire to life a little bit. You won't have that desire to enjoy the Lord a little bit. You're going to have that desire to tell people about, about Him a little bit. And I'm thankful tonight that I, I love the Lord tonight. I, I want to tell you about Him. I want to tell you what He's done in my life and what He's done in our life. You know, this morning I had to go off to, I didn't have, I went off to Fall uh, Creek Baptist Church, a pastor of our sick, to, uh, went over very time yesterday, took this place and had a real good time, but there was something missing this morning. Tracy wasn't able to go with me this morning. She's gone under the weather, very nauseous, wasn't able to go. And, and I, 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 I'll be honest with you, I, I love it when she's with me. Though. All the time I preach, she's going to miss two or three times, and uh, when your spouse is not with you, 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 you count on for being there. But I'm glad that she was back home praying. She was praying for me, and I, and I love that, but I, I I love my wife tonight. I know we joke around a lot, and everybody, uh, even this morning, the, one of the ladies this morning said, Where's Trace? I said, We broke up. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, but uh, I just can't help it. But uh, it just comes out sometime. But uh, I love having a good time. But, you know, I'm thankful I got a praying wife. I'm so thankful for my sister being here tonight. And uh, like I said earlier, you know, we don't worship all the time together, but we worship the same God. We're still right. worshiping him together. It's him that we worship. It's Jesus Christ. That's who we worship. It. Uh, we can bring, you know, we can bring it different churches and it doesn't matter about the name on the door. I don't care about the denomination thing. I don't care about any, any all that stuff. And that stuff is a separator for a lot of people. Like, a lot of people won't go inside a door unless it's a certain denomination they believe in. I don't believe in denomination. I believe in the apostles' doctrine. I believe in Jesus Christ himself. And if we follow this holy book right here, we won't worry about the denomination. We'll worry about each other. And I, I think it's time that we, we start telling people about we care about each other, that we love each other, we want to see you go to heaven with us. The only way you can go to heaven, the Bible says you must be born again. There's no other way. We can't work our way to heaven. We can't spend our way to heaven or anything like that. We've got to be born again. I'm glad it's that way. You know, If I had to buy my way to heaven, I, I, you couldn't pay the price. But Jesus Christ paid that price for us. Even the, the lowest man, the man with the least bank accounts, the man with the, the least goods in this world, he can still go to that place called heaven. And we're guaranteed that. We're guaranteed that place in heaven. And I'm going to talk tonight, if we get around to it here in a minute, about uh, knowing that we're saved, knowing of our salvation, knowing full assured that, that we're going to go there tonight. You know, there's ways in the Bible. He just don't leave us hanging out on a limb. There's a lot of people, well, I hope I'm saved. I, I hope I'm kept. I, I hope I make it. I don't hope nothing. I know that I am. That's what the Bible says. And tonight, we're going to talk about full assurance of salvation. It's not up to me. Don't follow me. You'll, you'll fail. I'll fall in the ditch someplace along the wayside. There's times when I I fail, but you follow Jesus Christ. You follow this holy book right here, Amen. and you will not fail. Don't follow the preacher. Don't follow a pastor. Right. Follow the word of God. And, I pray, and I'm thankful that here at the at free gift gospel mission, mission that we've got a pastor that preaches the word of God. You know, we stand in the pulpit. Preachers don't stand because they want to tickle your ear. They don't come in here because they want to tickle. I want to please the Lord. I don't care if it pleases anybody other than the Lord. If you're born again, you should be pleased about the same thing. Amen. But I'm, I'm glad today that the Lord. Lord, to send that message. I prayed all day, Lord, send us a message. Lord, Lord, give us something. You know, yes, He's not sending us all in vain anyway. It's got to be from the preacher himself. It's got to be from Him. And I'm yeah. glad that today. But uh, I, I just feel good in the Lord. If I don't go any place, I, I already feel like I'm in church, brother. I, I'm so happy tonight. 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 i I ask this, but you know, you've got to examine your heart. You've got to examine your destination. It's too important and not to talk about that each and every time that we get up. Are you saved? Are you born again? Are you going to this place called heaven? Because if you can't answer that for assuredly, then you need to check up. You need to check with your heart. And maybe you need to get on this altar. I wouldn't wait till I get through preaching. I wouldn't wait till the next song sang. I wouldn't wait till the altar call. I'd get on it right now. If you're not sure about 
to her salvation. You can get on this altar. I want you to. It won't bother me at all. I know that I, for myself, I know, I know, I know without a shadow of a doubt that one of these days I'm going to be in heaven together. I know for your, beyond a shadow of a doubt that you know, I love the Lord tonight. And I want to talk a little bit about the assurance of our salvation here. And if you got your Bibles, turn to 1 John chapter 5. And if you're able to stand tonight, I appreciate if you stand with me. If you're not able, that's okay. And, That's in Jesus. I'm thankful tonight that he can lift someone up like me. I was an awful sinner at one time. I was lost and undone without him. And there's times I look back on my life and the things I've done in my past. And I get behind this sacred desk sometimes and my knees just not great. Amen. I get so humble when I get behind here. I feel so uh, 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 appreciative of what the Lord has done for me. Next time I look back at my life and I say, Lord, how can you use me? How can you use a man like me to done the thing in my life? Everything that I've done. And I've never murdered anybody, but I, I, next time I've been plum, ungodly man. But, but that day at the cross, when Jesus went to that cross, Amen. and he died on Calvary. Yeah. He saved me, and He washed all those sins away. Yes, sir. Yes, he took those away from me. And even though this fleshly body, He still remembers those things sometimes. Yes. This fleshly man, He still goes back sometime in the past, and, and the devil will take him there, and He'll say, you can't be up there preaching the Word of God. You're not fit to do that. Well, i got news. Ain't none of us fit to do it. It's what Christ has done for us. That makes us allowable to do that. That makes us fit for the kingdom of God. What Christ has done for each and every one of us. I, I'm thankful that He went to that cross that day. Even though as sorry as I am, He went there for me also. He went there for each and every one. For the whole world, He went there. And the world itself could have salvation if they would accept it. Only He went for every person. For, from that on, He went to every person that anybody could come to Him and they could repent and they could get saved. Not everybody's done that. But I'm thankful today that He called my name on that Tuesday night during revival. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I accepted Him. I'm born again. I may not be perfect. But I'm on my way to heaven. Amen. And I'm glad that he, he accepts us. One of these days I'm going to walk out streets of gold just like everybody else in here too. I'm thankful for that. And I, I look forward to that. But get on with the message here if we're able to. John uh, chapter 5, 1 uh, John chapter 5. And I'm going to read verses 12 and 13. It said, He that hath the Son hath life, and he hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things I have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. I'm going to ask the pastor to take us to Lord in prayer, please. Father in heaven, we come once again in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the reading of your holy, precious, infallible word. Lord, in the hearing of it to our hearts, bless the man of God who stands tonight. Send the message that we need through Him. And we thank you and praise you in Christ's name. Amen. 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 I'm just saying once again, I'm so happy to be here tonight. I'm, I'm happy that I'm able to stand and preach a little bit about the Word of God. And I, I believe that we should know tonight before we leave this door that our assurance assurance of our full salvation that we are assured in the Bible that we are saved and there's ways to know that like I said God intends us to know our salvation is sure and our election is sure so I, I believe you know Romans 6 23 says the gift of God is eternal life you know all, all that God hands out is eternal everything that God does is eternal there is nothing that this about anything here on this life. We can take everything, all of our riches, all of our goods that we do on this earth, we can pile them up and we can burn them. There's nothing that, that's special about them. What's special is the gift that God gave us through Jesus Christ is eternal life. And we're promised that eternal life through the Bible. And we tell these things, I'm going to go uh, kind of quickly here, I guess, and through our walk. One thing is through our walk, how we uh, uh, present ourselves to a dying world out here tonight. And we, we go out here in the morning, we, we go to our job sites, we go to different places of business, we go to Walmart or whatever, we should present our uh, ourselves as a godly person. We should have to present ourselves. That's our walk that the world perceives of us. If we go out here and walk a different way than what the Bible says, then we have no way of uh, telling people about Christ because we're not doing that either. So, But it's the way we walk and we should want to walk. How you know that you're saved is that you're going to want to walk in the way of the Lord. You're going to want to walk in the way that He directs our paths. And uh, I think over in uh, 
Proverbs chapter 3, I think it is, and it says uh, the Lord directs our paths, and we don't always listen to the way that the Lord directs our paths. We often want to uh, subject ourselves to a little bit left or right of that Amen. way, but the Lord, we got to listen to what the Lord says That's today. Right. But our walk that, that demonstrates to ourselves and demonstrates to other people that we know of our salvation, that we know for sure that we're saved, because we've got to know that in order to, 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 to tell people about to be Amen. full and have full assurance of our <laughs> salvation. But it's that walk that we, we shine. Yeah. It's that walk. Yeah, even, even in front of family members, even in front of my wife, I've got to have a walk as a preacher. I've got to have a walk as a Christian. And she, in front of me, she's got to have that walk as a Christian. And, and we together, you know, we walk as a family in, in the ordinances of God. We've got to show people, we've got to show each other that we know that we're saved. You know, if we're, if we're always struggling, if we always thinking, well, is this thing really true? Is, is this thing, have I truly indeed got eternal life today? Then we're, we're always concerned about that. Our walk don't show that, but our walk should show that we know that we're saved until the day of redemption. We we know what Jesus Christ did on the cross. It's the finished work of Christ. It's not the, uh, anything else but what He's done on Christ on, on the cross for us. I, I think if we look back on the cross, when He said it was finished, our salvation plan was finished. It all was finished that day. And, if, and our walk will show other believers that, that we believe ourselves that, that Christ is inside us, that Christ lives and, and He dwells inside of us. And that Amen. we can go out here and we can tell people about how how we, we walk, show people how we walk and we can tell people, you know, it's a preacher's job too. I, I don't always uh, enjoy some of the message I preach. I, I like a, a real uh, glorious thing. I guess like a amen. Like, I guess that's okay. But, you know, sometimes we've got to get really firm in the Word and uh, not a whole lot of hallelujahs sometimes. And that's part of it. And that's one of the reasons that uh, I told Teresa once, I said, I can't do this tomorrow. I've shared the story with you. Doing a revival. The Lord had me, had me uh, I had a message to go, brother, but uh, I thought it was going to be a real hallelujah message. And I I thought, boy, it's going to bring the house down tonight. Well, it didn't. And the Lord brought me down a step or two. And, uh, so I had to say, well, he, and I thought when we were home tonight, I said, I ain't doing this no more. And I just can't do it. And, uh, that's not me. And, uh, but the, and, and that, that, that really brings you down. you got to humble. you got to be a humble person to get behind this desk, to listen to the, uh, the presence of the Lord, listen to his leadership coming down. But our walk, if, if you read over in chapter 1 there, and I'm not going to go back there to chapter 1 of the same book, verses 6 and 7, it talks about our walk. And about the walk of the light, you know, we got to walk in the light. If we don't walk in the light, then we're we're not none of His. And, and the, the verse went, uh, before that says, "He that have the Son has life, and he that have not the Son have not life." But I. That's a very simple statement. That's a hard statement. You've got to have the Son, Jesus Christ, in your life. You've got to be born again. You've got to have that blood yes, washed and before you one of His. If you're not here, if you've not done those yes. things, and the Bible says over in Hebrews that you're a bastard, you have no father. And that's a spiritual, and that's not an easy thing to say, I'll be honest with you. But, the, but, but that's what the Bible says. We've got to have, in order to have Amen. life, we've got to have Jesus Christ. But our walk shows God, you know, it shows other people that we believe that our uh, uh, salvation is full and it's assured and that we, we know that we're going to go to heaven one of these days. If we didn't know that, we couldn't raise our hands. We couldn't shout. We couldn't sing. We couldn't praise the Lord if we didn't know for sure that we're going to go to heaven. Uh, Brother Bob said earlier, you know, about, you know, I don't have any place to go. I preached this morning over in uh, Joshua and one of the things he asked those people, you know, if you don't want to, and I'm just paraphrasing, if you if you think it evil to serve me, that, then look back at the, at the things that evil has brought you. What better place can you be but with serving God, where else can you go? Who yeah, else can you yeah. turn to? Where you know you can't God. turn to a person. A person's going to let you down. They can have all the, the intentions, they good intentions they want, but sooner or later, a person's going to let you down. I'll let you down, but Jesus will never let you down. But we need to look back and we need to see the things that God's brought us from. Well, we need to, to show people that you know God can bring you out of this too. And it doesn't mean that being a Christian is a uh, just a. Bed and roses type things because it's not. We battle each and every day, and, and preachers can hear, and I'm sure other people can too. Preachers can hear, it, it, you're in a battle. But the, the devil's going to attack you each and every way. He's, he's going to, he knows your weaknesses. He knows where, and the brother said about the are seeping in the cracks and stuff. He'll come in if you let just the least little bit of crack. He's going to come in there and he's going to make a big old, big old hole in, in that That's wall. But, you know, we got to make sure that he knows, that the devil knows, that we know that we're saved until the day of redemption. We got to let the devil know. There's no use to bother me, devil. I know who I serve. He's a lot stronger than you are. What power you've got, he gives you. He allows you to have one of these.
these days, that's going to end. And I'm thankful for that day that's going to, it's going to end, that we're going to be called home. We're all going to be in heaven together. But another thing that's in chapter 2 of this same book here is our obedience. You know, it says if, if, if we obey His commandments, and this is paraphrased too, I don't want to turn back over here, but if we obey His commandments, we're His. We love Him. And it shows us that, that we love Him. So we've got to obey these commandments. You know, the Lord's got a list of things that the uh, do's and don'ts of the Bible. There's a lot of people don't understand that. There's a lot of people disagree. I don't like people telling me what to do. I heard, I don't want people telling me what to do or what not to do. Well, the Bible, if, if, you don't, if you believe that way, there's no way you can live for the Lord because there's things in here that tells us that we definitely can't do it. And one of them uh, uh, is abortion. And one And another one is same-sex marriage. And if you believe that, and, and if you go for that at all, then, then you're wrong because the Bible is always right. I'm not telling you wrong. The Bible's telling you wrong. I'm, I'm agreeing with the Bible. I'm agreeing with what the, uh, the Word of God says. We've got to uh, be obedient to the Word of God when He called me to preach. And that was the awfulest 14 months I ever had in my life because I was denying God. I had quit everything in the church. And I know I testified this before, but you know, if we don't obey Him and, and, and do what He has us to do, then we're not obedient to Him. He's not going to bless over that. I quit everything in church. I didn't want to sing in the choir. Of course, that was a blessing for the choir, I guess, but I didn't want to sing in the choir. I didn't want to, didn't want to teach Sunday school. I didn't want to do a prayer room. I didn't want to do anything. I, it was, I was lucky just to come to church. In fact, that's about all I was willing to do because I was out of God's will. Even though he, I, I was told God, I said, I can't do that. But we got to realize today, it's not us doing the work. It's Christ. And if it's up to us, we would fail it all up. But it's up to Christ. Christ, but it's obedience to him, and we got to show him obedience. I, I think obedience is part of his, his church membership. I, 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 church, you know, when you, if you don't come to church and you're disobeying what God has tell, tell us to do, he told us to assemble ourselves together, and he makes no questions about that. There's no ifs and ands of us about that. He tells us to assemble ourselves together, so we got to do what the Bible says. I, I tell people all the time, you know, when's the last time you went to church? I can't remember. Well, then you, be, you need to get right with God. You need to be in back in fellowship with God. You, you, need to, you need to look up on yourself. How are you going to tell people about Christ if you're not listening to what Christ, people would have to say about Christ? If you're not doing the things, how are you going to tell other people? So we need to do that. And another thing is, is the love within our heart. You know, our heart speaks abundance. Our, our heart tells us and all this, is, and this is in chapter 2 also, I think, in chapter 3 also, but I believe our heart really speaks what we really mean. Our, our heart tells what the mouth, what the said. Sometimes stuff comes out of our mouth that's not very pleasant. Sometimes stuff comes out of our mouth that, you know, we would like to take back, but it's like the being on a computer. Once you put sin, it's gone. And, and there's nothing, you can't take it back. So we need to check our heart each and every day. It's what's in our heart that's going to come out of our mouths. If the love of God's in our heart, if the love of other people, if our concern for other people about salvation, about being in church, and, and about all this uh, church attendance and all that, if that shows in our heart, then that's what's going to come out of our mouth. But we've got to make sure that love is in our heart. And we, we've got to show that love. And, and my heart is, at times, I'll be, I, I, I've really searched my heart the last few days. I, I've really searched through. And there's some things that I need to let go of from the past. There's some things that, you know, I need to look back and say, Lord, it's all in your hands. There's nothing I can do about it anyway. There's some things that the devil brings up all the time that, you know, gets me so discouraged and puts me back in, 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 in just in a corner someplace and I just want to hide sometime. And, but I believe that, you know, if we let those things go knowing and we clear our heart out and, and we turn everything over to Him, then everything's going to be all right. You know, I don't, I don't worry. And I, when I preach, I, I, I tell people, I, I don't know what I'm going to say half the time anyway. So if you have a problem with it, you know, take it up with the Lord. I, I don't know what I'm saying anyway. But uh, I, and I want it to be like that. But if I ever talk uh, out of my way, if I ever talk anything out of what Scripture says, I definitely want somebody to come and tell me. that. That's part of being a brother. That's part of showing love to each other. Yeah. We've got to be sound in doctrine. Pride's got to take a, a back seat to all this. You know, if someone comes to me and says, I want to talk to you about this or that, you know, maybe we don't agree on this. We need to talk. That's the way brothers in Christ ought to be. We ought to be able to come to each other and say, you know, because this salvation and heaven and hell is too important for us to say, well, I know what I'm doing, brother. I, I've been preaching for uh, 10 years or whatever. I don't need any, any type of thing from you. But, you know, we do need help from other preachers. We need our prayers and we need brothers and sisters to come to us and, and help us. I, 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 I'll tell you, I, I'm just, I love it when somebody comes to us. I want to help you with something. And I 
that's what we ought to be. It shouldn't take it hard. We ought to show that love. And we get mad at one another. We have hatred. We can't love the Father if we have hatred in our hearts. But you know, we've got to love the Father. We've got to show that love. And that love's got to be in our hearts. We've got to have that love that Christ can only put in there. You know, I, I love a lot of different things in life. I I love my wife with all my heart. She loves me. There's no doubt about it. And what's not the love? And, uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Just look it up sometime. <laughs> but, I, but I do. I love her with all my heart. But, you know, Christ loves us even more than we love our spouse. He loves us more than anybody can imagine. And uh, I love him more than I do anybody on this earth. I love my wife with all my heart. But I know without Christ, that love might not be there anymore. That love, that love for your wife might not be as stronger for your husband if it wasn't for Christ in your life and I understand I appreciate that And uh, but I love her with all my heart I'm glad she's there with me like I said this morning I, I was kind of like a one armed man this morning you know it's it just uh it was hard to uh, preach this morning without or there, and uh, but the Lord always delivers the message. I'm, I'm glad we can depend on Him. But uh, another thing is separation from the world. These times, you know, the world wants to drag us back out there, and more often the world wants to come in these doors here. That's when we got to put a halt to it. We cannot let the world come in our church doors. We can't let the world come in here and dictate what we're going to do or what we're not going to do. <coughs> I, I pity the day when, when they start re regulating churches where you can't preach against sin. You know, we need to preach against sin in our churches Amen. today. Amen. If they do that, then, then Lord behold, and ain't long until the Lord's won't come back then because Lord ain't going to stand for that. We've got to have people in the pulpits that's not afraid uh, to speak to what God have, have them to do. Regardless of what uh, denomination or, or what uh, ethnic group or whatever you can't worry about making anybody mad you got to worry about pleasing the Lord and, that, and that's what we're here to do tonight but, you know, we got to have a separation from the world and that's another way that you can tell that you're that you're saved and I love that song I know my name is written there and, and I know that tonight but I, I know it because of the separation that we made from other people these people that you have to separate yourself from they may be family members they may be uh, friends or, or work or co-workers whatever these people that you have to separate yourself from in order to live this Christian life. These people that you cannot hang around and still have the, the walk of that, that we have to have, the obedience that we have to have, and the love that we have to have in our heart. These people that I cannot associate with on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's not saying you've got to go around with your nose stuck up now, you've got to show them that love of God. If they get saved, that's exactly what you're talking about. But we've got to have that. And I, I believe tonight that, that that shows, and when that shows out, that's showing that we know that we've got full salvation, that we know that we're in his arms, that, that there's nobody can take that away from you. I haven't heard a man say one time that, you know, uh, he thought about quitting this a long time ago. He said, you know, you can't even quit and get out of it. You're still in it. And uh, But that don't give you a right to go sin. That don't give you a right to go out here and, and, and do the things that the world would have you to do. That's what that gives you the right to do is show Jesus that you love him more and more and show the world that you love him more and more. And Another thing is our evidence of the faith. You know, evidence of the faith, and we, we read about a lot about Jesus Christ, and I believe everything in this book. I, I can take it for every word that's in it. I believe it cover to cover. It's never been proven wrong. Uh, uh, hundreds of years that they wanted to prove it wrong, and nobody's ever been able to prove one little iota that it's wrong. If, if one word, one verse, one chapter or something could be proven wrong, we would have to shut these doors and we'd have to walk out of here because we'd be preaching and teaching in vain. But not a word has ever been proven wrong in the Word of God and it never will because that's the truth. It's, 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 it's the whole truth. But, you know, but the evidence of our faith is that you know our evidence to the world is that we believe this. Our evidence to the world is that we come to church as often as we can. You know, uh, Teresa was talking about a brother and, and uh, but he was wanting to come today, but physically he could not come this afternoon. There'll be a time in our lives, more than likely, that we're not physically going to be able to go to church ourselves. There'll be a time where, where, where we'll be lucky to go to church once a month because of physical uh, things that come against us. Maybe, I uh, hope not, but maybe so. But at the same time, we've got to come and, and at church when we're able to, when you know we can't put off, you know, well, I'll go next week, we've got to come each and every Sunday. And that's not a, asking a whole lot. I'll be honest with you, and I ain't going to get off on, on preaching church at that. That's not asking a whole lot for church members to come and worship them together a total of maybe five or six hours a week. And that's probably about all we're here, five or six hours a week. If you think about that, that's the time that you know, we come and we get built up. And without y'all praying for me, without 
without saying your faces, uh, whether you're a five preacher or not, you know, when I'm around God's people, it builds me up. Right. I, right. I get right. confidence right. from them. I, I get, you know, I, I get a satisfaction from them. I, I, I get led and, and want to do a little bit more for them because I love that every time you talk to someone, you fall in love with this a little bit deeper. I'm concerned about every person in here. I'm concerned. About, I don't know what you got going on in your life, but I guarantee you everybody's got something going on. But I'm concerned about people. I'm concerned that, you know, that they may slip away from the Lord. So we've got to tell people all the time, brother, we love you. Sister, we love you. You know, if there's anything we can do, let us know. And we, when we say, yeah, I'll pray for you, we need to do that. We need to pray for that person. And I'm guilty as anybody else. I say, well, I'll pray for you that, that life goes on and as things go, your, your mind slips and you forget to pray for that person. But we need to pray for those people that we tell them we're going to pray for them. The Lord expects that. But the, And lastly, the the reason and, and the main reason I, I know that we're saved and for eternity is because Jesus said so. And uh, if you got your Bibles, turn to John chapter 3. And this is familiar verses, but I'm going to turn over here and read. I'm going to read verses 14 through 16. John chapter 3, 14 through 16. It says, and as, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And we all know that verse, and I, I, I'm so thankful that Jesus said it, and I love the letters in red. And the whole book is about Jesus, but I love the red letters in red where he spoke. And he tells us that we have eternal life through his Son. Jesus Christ. That's what God says, and that's what we need to hang on to. You know, nobody can tell you that uh, you know you're going to lose your sight. I know a lot of people would say that, but I don't believe that one uh, one old. I, I don't believe that we're able to lose. We're able to lose fellowship. I do believe that we're able to lose. Self. I've been there. We're able to lose fellowship, but we can't lose our salvation. I believe that once our name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life, it stays there. I don't read in any place in the Bible where God has an eraser. I just don't believe that. And I don't. If you can show me. Any any different than I, they, I stand corrected but I've read it quite often I've, I've, I've prayed over this sermon tonight I, I prayed I, I want you to make sure that your election's made sure and the only one that knows that is you that right. it says Who, whosoever shall believe it and I'm just a whosoever I'm, I'm just a nobody in a lot of people's eyes but I am the son of God I, I'm the son of, of the living God and this Bible is a, it's a living thing. It's a living person that we're talking about here. Each and every time that we pick it up, there's something new that comes out of it. And, and it's not wishing worship to the point. It tells us everything we know. But we can pick this up and, and, and thank you. Lord, I, I'm in this situation now. And you may read a verse that you've read many, many, many times. Then you read that one special verse again. And it shows that the Lord is showing you something special about that verse to help you through that situation. Yeah. I, I, I love each and every one of you. I, I hope you got a little something out of that. I, I pray tonight that if you're here and you're doubting your salvation, that you get on this altar and make sure of your salvation, that you talk to the Lord. And somebody, what I really love about this church, I don't care who comes, how many comes, that somebody's always there to pray with you. Never pray by Amen. yourself. You're never by yourself up here. I, I, I'm, I'm a big uh, fan of, of, of saying there, if someone comes to altar, they should never be by themselves unless that person says, you know, I'm just up here to pray, you know, myself, and then, then you back away. But, but I believe you actually try to help that person. And, uh, but I, I believe in mine. I'm thankful for Brother Vern. I'm thankful for Sister Melissa. You know, they've been such a help during the years. They've, they've uh, let me preach but ever since I announced my calling to preach. Even before I announced my call, I remember Brother Vern always come back up to me. Well, he used to have Saturday night, every Saturday night or once a month, whatever. And uh, he comes, so you got anything to say? And I said, no. And uh, but uh, and, uh, but he'd always make that offer. He'd always make me feel at home. And that's the type of love that, that only God can put in your heart. That's the type of love that you know. And I felt that love from Brother Vern. I felt that love from Sister Melissa from the very first time that I stepped through those doors over there on Bradley Road. I knew that they were true blue. I knew that they were genuine. So, and the, I, I just love them to death. But, you know, I love Jesus Christ for putting us together. You know, he put us here for a reason tonight. You know, uh, we all could have been a different place. We all could have stayed home tonight. We could have went to different church. But he promised all each right here. And I believe it's for a reason. I, and I think God's word never comes back void. So, Personally, I don't, I don't consider myself much of a preacher, but I consider him the greatest preacher of all. He, he definitely is. And so I, I believe, pray tonight that you'll accept what, what's been said here tonight, and I want you to make sure that you know that you're on the shadow without 
that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I love you, and I'll turn it back to our brother Burke. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> and thus concludes Brother Earl's first message of the evening. We'll be back to the second message here in just a few moments. <laughs> Just a little humor for you Super Bowl fans. <laughs> God 